Hello there, welcome to an extra special um, video. Um, it's going to be different than this one. It's actually a book review rather than a film review. Um, the book is called uh, Lost Connections. It's by Johan, Johan Harvey. Um, it's all about mental health, depression, anxiety. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know why I, I have anxiety, depression, things like that. So it's an area that I obviously have an interest in since I have it. Um, I have read some self help books, how to get help yourself as you go through this in the past. And usually I find them really unsatisfying. Usually I find them, even if it's from someone who's suffered from it before and they've seen how they get better, usually I find it kind of either patronising what they're saying, like it seems too simplistic, or you feel they're hiding something, they're not telling you everything. It's like you're getting bits and bobs, then you get to race how they get better. It never seems to fit, right? It just feels like there's, there's stuff missing there and you're getting told stuff that's vague and it's stuff you can get told and like if you have anxiety you, you find a lot of time you go through these NHS courses that are meant to help you and help you figure out what's wrong with you and you get some basic stuff from them, basic theories and most self-help books are pretty much those theories so a lot of time you read the books and you go uh, I didn't really explain much more than I really know but anxiety and things like that you know, it's always something that it feels like it's scratching the surface. So even if someone who's been suffering from it before, and I've read some of those books, never quite really delivers what you're looking for. This book's different. This book actually goes into much more detail. It's been much further researched. And the important thing with this is it was written by a journalist who suffers from anxiety and depression, who actually researches things. It's not just based on personal experience or and a few people who they know. It's based on a lot of his personal experience, so a lot is based on friends with anxiety, then doctors, talking to doctors, see what the historical access to anxiety is, see what the what the old ideas of anxiety were, where they've where they've been helpful, where they've been uh, come short. It's much more of an uh, examination of the whole subject rather than a buy this book and uh, I can help you get a bit better because those books don't. At least for me they don't. Um, so this is a much more intensive book. It's, it's for start it feels a lot longer. It feels like uh, it's not written in... <laughs> a lot of these books they seem to write as big a font as possible just to um, to make up for the fact there's not really that much there and there's lots of graphs to take up a few pages here or there and stuff like that. So usually you're getting like an 80 page book spread over like 200 pages trying to hope we don't notice. This one is like 300 pages and it's tightly uh, written and there's no graphs or anything else, it's just ab about the information. And then and then, then there's all the um, it, it, it annotates out a, bit, a lot of stuff and you can read the back and see where all the researchers come from. It's, it's a much different book from most books about anxiety. Um, the the important thing with this is it starts off from, he starts talking about his anxiety, where it began. And where it began with him was, he was suffering anxiety attacks when he was a student and he went, and he went to the doctor and told us there was a chemical imbalance in his brain, that was the theory at the time. So he was given antidepressants. And then once they started to not work so well, the doses got up and up and up. So, he was taking these things that would only work for a short time and there were there weren't full solutions to his problem. It was just something to keep him feeling like something had been done. But no one really had a clue how to fix it and at that point everyone was all in on drugs to fix. It was like a chemical imbalance. That was the problem and all these drugs will help. And there's various antidepressants in the market that were all kind of covering at everybody. I flooded the doctor's offices and generally the point of view was just give people pills and hope for the best. Now I've gone through this area, you know, it's it's, it's not a fun area to go through. Um, why are you depressed? What's the problem? Why are you so anxious? It's not the easiest thing to talk about and it's not the easiest thing to try and work out. And you usually just hope you get a doctor 
who's sympathetic. Like I have, I'm a good doctor in this area. Because I was sent to courses on meditation and things, so I started meditating and that helped me a little bit. Uh, I started doing exercises, that's helped me a bit. You know, like yoga and things. So I've been doing things, even though I've got some like medication, it's not like really like um, high dose or anything. It's just to keep me a bit more under control. It's not to, um, I'm trying to do other, other methods to avoid um, depression really. It's like, um, cause I don't want to get, you hear all these stories with people who are stuck in pills and they have to lower the dose just to get off the pills and it's a very painful project prospect and I'm not keen on doing that. I'd rather keep my brain, even though matter how flawed it is, actually under my control. So I do meditation and exercise as well and try and use some sort of willpower really and try and find ways to um, sleep better and things like that. And Because I mean, the thing, big thing about anxiety is sometimes you sleep okay and other times you sleep horribly. It just depends on your luck. <laughs> uh, so so I, I've been going in like, my own method. But the thing about this book is it actually confirms a lot of stuff I was, or it talks about a lot of stuff I was suspecting just by general reading, maybe general, generally, um, think my own case and think about people I know who've got anxiety and what I think it's the problem is and what's been sold to us as the, the cure the problem. The cure was, was always sold as it's a chemical imbalance. I am not so sure of that. And this book didn't seem to be very sure of that either. Um, the thing this book is, is it's a talking about, uh, what, it's not a bit like what, why, it's about why people are um, depressed, why they're anxious. And everyone's just going for the medical opinion rather than looking into um, what could be causing it and what are the researches that have happened over time the research people who are, are anxious or depressed and why are they anxious or depressed and it goes into um, it falls into, into looking at the antidepressants and the medical side of it and like how the the original theories don't really add up when they did the tests and how the a lot of the research was stacked um, and how basically the people who are overseeing the research is actually people who are getting paid by the medical, um, the, like the pharmaceutical companies. So they're their own gatekeepers, so they can just push out anything. And a lot of like the tests, the only tests that go through are the ones that prove it, anything in their way, any, any test that happens that doesn't prove it is suppressed. So there's that, was the idea is a lot of these tests show that the drugs don't really work. And there's lots of side effects like gaining weight, low sexual drive, things like that, that are all there. And people are getting all these pills and they're just really anxious, but they think the pills are doing something for them. And for some of them, it may be doing something for them in the short term, like a placebo effect. But uh, Harry goes into the idea of what's actually causing it. It's like, um, it can just be an imbalance. There are, there are different causes and what are the solutions and how can you actually find ways to make yourself less depressed. Uh, and his argument in the book is basically it's, it's a deal with people's lives. Like people who have gone through like a traumatic life. Actually being depressed is like a very normal reaction to that. Have you ever had a, a life that has lots of stresses, that has no hope for the future? and it's just very depressing and it's continual year after year. Depression does seem to be the logical outcome. That's like where our brain would actually go. To not be depressed would be weird, but to be depressed is like naturally very normal for a person in um, society like that. And tests have been, like research has been proving this, is like um, people have been asking research people are depressed and actually asking about their lives rather than asking how they feel. And it's meant the idea that people are just cut off. People are feeling isolated from others. They can't talk to their families. They they can't find the communication tools to deal with life. Their life is is like unending um, stress and 
difficult situations with very little support and these people tend to get depressed and tend to have anxiety attacks and panic attacks and become long term sufferers of anxiety and things like that and that, that kind of strikes true to me actually because uh, I can see when I, when I, once you actually get anxiety I look back over years of a slow build and then it's like yeah a lot of this does feel like it, it, it started on things that were happening and then as they built up and built up they create a problem so to me that strikes as something that's true but there's also a lot of other social isolations like you've got media have been social I've socially isolated people because people aren't talking anymore they're talking on the phones it's not healthy and people are not are, are not going to nature people are just sitting in the houses a lot of the time there's no access to nature people who live in cities a lot people who live in cities tend to have more anxiety and depression than people who live out in the countryside doesn't mean people in the country don't have depression it's just that Statistically, there's it's a higher percentage in the cities because people who don't have access to like fresh air and a landscape that's not all concrete. Like there, there's something that does to the brain this idea that the brain um, likes seeing greenery and likes seeing like nature basically. That does something to the brain that actually helps helps keep you sane. There's also things like what's in our genes because we've evolved from monkeys basically and there's a lot of territorial and animalist behaviour that we've studied in monkeys and chimps that actually we transfer to human beings shows a pattern that suggests that certain things that happens in those societies like certain apes get depressed and for certain reasons you can find correlations, even though it's not exactly one to one because we have evolved beyond the apes, so it's not exactly exactly the same. But because there are certain genes that are similar, there are patterns of behaviour that are similar. So some of it is just humanity evolving from beyond from where they were to where they're becoming, but a lot of the genes are still there. And we're, we're, ha we're having to deal with our change in society where certain instincts are no longer useful. So those have to be repressed and that causes like anger and repression and like certain, certain um, things have to get your system so you can be a healthy person and if society no longer deems certain things healthy they get repressed and they become much more stigmatised so that doesn't lead to a healthy person either. So all of these elements, but the main thing is, is that there's no sense of community, people feel isolated, people feel like they're alone, they don't have a sense of community to belong to, but a lot of people don't think that if anything goes wrong they've got any good friends who would actually support them. Like, a lot of people are asked, uh, do you have any friends you can rely on in a bad situation, and a lot of them say nope, which is a horrible situation to be in, but that's the way a lot of people are feeling just now, and it's steamrolling throughout the, throughout the years. I mean, now, I mean, in the early 80s, Thatcher said there's no such thing as society. And that seems to have, that's one of the book, is that seems to have actually something that's become a truism because everyone seems to believe that people are isolated or they're on their own. That's viewed as the ideal state, an individualistic state. Like, like community is, is less of a it's viewed as something lesser now than it used to be before communities where people were together, people would talk, people would ask for help. Now that doesn't happen anymore. People are isolated, communities are isolated, people are on the phones a lot. It's very fake and it's very distant as people trying to protect themselves. People have a lot of protection, protective mechanisms in their, in their way of dealing with people that creates isolation within themselves and creates anxiety because they can't communicate and people are craving communication. So you've got all these elements that are building up in people. You know, you've got terrible jobs, terrible life that you feel no escape from. I mean, a lot of people have working jobs they hate. They can't stand the thought of actually going to work every day. Some take drugs to survive it. And that creates other addictions. 
other people um, have problems at home, they just cannot deal with their families and that causes difficulties. Some people have been abused by their families, they can't talk about it. And a lot of people who have depression have like childhood traumas that they can't talk about in their societies that it's just taboo so they can't talk about it so they but a lot of the tension of that builds in their bodies so it creates tension that they're not even conscious of half the time. So even so if this book goes towards the idea that community is actually a better developing more community based systems and people getting closer again is probably going to help people actually with anxiety because people who feel isolated get sicker and are weaker but people with community it's something to fight for the people who think they can fight for them they feel better for themselves and that's kind of the argument it doesn't mean to say that communities always work I mean um, communities lead to communism that doesn't work <laughs> right that's one that's the obvious one to say there's also communities like the Amish who have built a society on the idea that well, that um, the modern world is is basically shallow and it doesn't inform good values. But also, it means those societies are so tightly so tight that there's an abuse of the society. No one does anything about it. So they they have a community, but they have limitations. So. There's no ideal thing, and I think the book is. I talk about how to, what the solutions to it is. It's not a one stall, one magic button thing of like the pill. The original antidepressants were meant to be the easy solution to a very complex problem, but because the problems were far more complex than the doctor could ever imagine, this thing doesn't really work. A pill can't solve problems in society. In a society where there's lots of jobs that unsatisfying where most jobs are like there's no security there's like you're basically zero hour contracts that drives people insane and that actually makes them sick because they have no security and just having community doesn't solve those problems it takes a society change and we're adopting or adapting to a new way of thinking that actually to take away some of the base tensions it creates a healthy society. That's the argument of the book. And I, can, I agree with that actually. I think it's something you really need because I've, I've worked with community organisations, the volunteering things for years. And there's lots of people who need help. There's like, like, capitalism doesn't solve a lot of these problems. The people just get left on their lonesome a lot of the time. You do need a community to actually help people. And that's what the book's kind of arguing for is to try and um, to have better values, to, have, to, to be less focused on what are the exterior values because a lot of people, the book argues, uh, are tied to like very shallow values. It's consumerism, it's like I need to buy this to feel good about myself. Why are you buying it? You don't really want it but I want it because I want to buy something. Which, if you've got anxiety, you know that's uh, something they do. You know, people do that for anxiety, but the higher anxiety goes, you start to notice it yourself. And you know, it's like trying to flush those values away a little bit, like don't be impressed by advertising. Advertising doesn't really mean anything. You're just, um, you're just wanting for peer pressure, because people want to feel as if they're wanted, so advertising is the easy solution just like pills are and it's not a good solution because it's just it's a shallow solution appealing to people who are looking for the shallow's interest which leads to a partner behaviour that goes for quick answers that at the expense of more complicated deeper answers about like you're not going out as much as you should you're not taking good care of yourself you're not like meditating to try and relax your body and, and have Try and find out what your what your problem actually is. You're not um, taking care of how you spend your time, like what job you have. It's all about those things that are. I'm in society just now all the time, in this kind of very capitalist, consumer-based society that everyone can see there's something wrong there, but no one's quite sure how to fix it. 
but we're now seeing the signs from like anxiety, a lot of anxiety and depression that there is definitely a problem. The solution this book suggests is we need to actually look after ourselves better and actually think it through better and actually say I need these things to survive, I need people to treat me right, I need to treat people right, I need to look into my problems and see what the problems are and try and find a solution rather than this pill will solve the problem or this, you know, buying something will solve the problem or trying to look good in social media will solve the problem. Well actually when you look at any social media now, it's just this constant drumming which resembles anyone with anxiety or this need for attention, need for some social status. It's like, like when you look at Twitter, Twitter is just this whole anxiety attack breakdown really. Constantly, <laughs> so that's not a good solution. Um, this book is very good. It's it's really worth reading. It'll take you a while to read it, especially with anxiety. It takes you a while to do stuff, but it is really worth reading. It's if you've got anxiety and depression, this is really good. This is a really good book. It's called Lost Connections, as I said before. It's by jo Johan Harry. It's very good. It really. I've given you a very rough version of the book. It's really well written. It's it's written in a, a style to make it very consumer friendly, because he's trying to reach as many people as he can who have the problem, who don't want flowery language around. He just it's basic language, but it keeps the point, keeps moving you forward to what you, the information you need to know. It's it really delivers what he's delivered and it's probably the best book on anxiety for someone who suffers that I've read. It really does give you what you feel is good healthy pointers rather than, you know, the, the you know, this work for me thing which never really satisfies me. Well I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick review. I enjoyed doing it. It's nice to do a book, a book review rather than a film review so it is a bit different. I'll be back later with some more videos. I'll see you then. Comment below if you have anxiety and if, if you've read the book or have you read other kind of books that deal with the subject and have they helped you. Okay, bye for now.